In this video, we're going back to basics and talking about how to test bipolar transistors. Of course, I mean NPN and PNP transistors. Uh, there are a couple of tools that you can use, and we'll just talk, talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. Uh, what we'll recognize with PNP and NPN transistors, it's really a sandwich of P and N type materials. And uh, what we can do is test each of these PN junctions individually as if they were diodes. Now, of course, you can't build a transistor by connecting diodes in this way, but we can test them to ensure that each of these PN junctions or diodes operate like a diode. Uh, and that's one way to test whether a PNP or NPN transistor is good. So uh, that can be done with uh, an old analog multimeter like this uh, Simpson 260. We'll do that first. And then uh, we'll look at some other tools that could be used that might give you a little bit more information. Of course, one of the more important things to know before you go to test a given transistor is to know its pinout, to know which lead is the base collector or emitter. And that will vary uh, by package type, whether we're talking about like a TO92 package like this plastic transistor here, or a metal TO46, or a surface mount device or whatever. So it's always helpful to take a look online, uh, take a look at the, the part number that's uh, on the part, and try to verify what the pinout is. Most packages will uh, have a standard pinout. Uh, for example, the TO92s, if you look at them uh, kind of in this orientation here with the rounded uh, face of it this way, will be collector, base, emitter in that order. But there are exceptions to that rule. Some of the metal can transistors are a little bit easier. Uh, the metal can will typically have a little tab on it uh, at one portion of the, uh, the case, and that usually designates the emitter. And then uh, the next one closest to that is typically the base and then collector opposite the emitter. Uh, again, that's generally the case, but you really need to kind of check the particular transistor to be sure to get the pinout right. So the basic testing procedure is just to ensure that each of the PN junctions behaves like a diode, conducts in one direction and doesn't conduct in the other. And before widespread proliferation of digital multimeters, we uh, used analog multimeters like this one. And if you've got one of these, you can certainly use that. So let's show you how. All right, we'll set up the meter to measure resistance. And you can use like an R times 10, R times 100 mode, even R times 1. It really isn't that important. If you go up to a really sensitive modes, then you run the risk of uh, thinking there might be some conduction, but uh, you're just seeing leakage through your fingers. So uh, using a lower resistance range is often helpful. So in this case, this center lead here is the base. So let's start by forward biasing some junctions. I'm going to connect the uh, you know, positive lead here to the base. And if I connect up, in this case, to the collector, I can see some deflection on the meter, indicating that I've got some conduction in that direction. And if I connect up to the emitter, I also see that. And that's what you'd expect to see uh, looking at uh, the diagram here, that base to collector, base to emitter, both of them are going to give me forward bias or some conduction. So that's what I'm seeing. Now if I reverse the leads, let's uh, hook up the positive lead to the end side of the junction. And now I can see I don't have any conduction in that direction to the collector or to the emitter. And we can also ensure that we don't have any conduction going from emitter to collector. So right there we've just verified at least that the junctions of this particular transistor are okay and we can kind of put it on the probably good pile. Of course most folks playing with electronics today are going to have a digital multimeter or a DMM. Now of course we could follow the exact same procedure just measure resistance in both directions but with DMMs, there's a better way. Uh, almost all DMMs will have a diode test function. See with the little diode symbol here on this Fluke 87. And what that will do is put a fixed current through the junction and measure actually the forward voltage. So that gives you a little bit better idea of what might be going on. So let's uh, take a look at how to do that. And we'll do that with a different meter here. So I've got this older Fluke 79. And with this one, we see the diode symbol down here, but it's in yellow. And what that means is that when we switch to that mode, okay, we're basically in the low ohms or 40 ohm or continuity test mode. But if I hit the yellow button, that will put me in the diode test mode. 
and we see we actually get a, a volts reading here. So what that'll do is put a test current um, through, the, uh, through the junction and we can actually read the forward voltage. So let's do the same thing. If I measure, if I put the, this is an NPN transistor, so uh, we'll put the positive on the base and put the negative on the emitter and we can actually read 677 millivolts uh, of voltage across that PN junction. Let's go over to the collector, 680 millivolts that way. And we'll notice that if we go, you know, where we expect it to be open circuit, like across the, whoop, let me redo that here, hard to do that through the camera. That's uh, emitter to collector, I'm not seeing any, uh, you know, voltage there, which means it's blocking the current. And then I could also go to the base, now that's base to, uh, in this case, base to collector, reverse biased. And we'll go reverse bias the other way. All of those should so open, and they do. So using your digital multimeter in the diode test function, you can very easily test, again, each of those junctions in the PNP or NPN to be sure that it works. Now, of course, uh, there are other ways to test bipolar transistors, too. So let's take a look at that. What I've got here is a little battery-operated transistor and diode checker that I built probably in the late 70s, a Heathkit IT3127. Now a little tester like this, you can find them for sale for a couple of bucks, because nobody really uses them anymore, but they're a nice thing to have. And they'll take the testing that you do with a transistor just a little step beyond just checking the junctions. They'll give you a relative reading of the current gain of the device, and also tell you if the device is leaky meaning that some of the junctions are bad. So let me show you how you use this. Okay, to use this tester, we can either connect up through the alligator leads to uh, the transistor or use the little socket here. So if we line up the emitter base and collector connections into the socket and select either NPN or PNP, select high or low, that stands for high power or low power. This would be like big power transistors in like a TO3 package or a TO220 the lower power transistors would be down here. And now the switch position here, when it's set to leakage, the meter will show a relative reading of how much current is being drawn from collector to emitter, or leakage current, when the transistor is off. And uh, as you can see, I don't see any deflection here. If I moisten my finger and stick it across the leads, you can actually see some deflection that would indicate you know, a small amount of leakage current. So uh, that's something that you really wouldn't very easily be able to see when you're doing the meter method. And now also we get a relative reading of current gain. By pulling down this momentary switch, we see a deflection on the meter. Now it's not calibrated, but it will give you a relative indication of current gain of that transistor. So if you have a bunch of transistors and you want to kind of somewhat match their response, you can pick those that have got about the same amount of current gain. So a nice handy little thing. Again, you could probably pick them up on eBay for just a couple of bucks or a ham radio flea market. And a nice little handy uh, tester that I've used many, many times over the years. But this is another Heathkit uh, transistor checker from about that same era, you know, late 70s or so. And again, you could probably find these pretty inexpensively on eBay, etc. This happens to be a model IT-18. And this takes uh, the transistor checking to a little bit of the next level again beyond that simple transistor checker. Uh, here we've got the ability of measuring uh, gain of the transistor and get actually a number you know for a current gain like the beta or HFE of the transistor and also get a measure of leakage current um, directly. So let me show you how you use this. Using this type transistor checker is pretty straightforward also. So we'll take that same transistor we've been using I'll connect it up into the socket or you could connect it up to the leads that are provided down below. This is an NPN transistor so we turn the mode switch from off to NPN and the meter is now in what's called a calibrate mode and we'll adjust the beta cal until the meter reads full scale and once we read full scale then we can depress the test button and now the meter will read the DC beta of the transistor we can see the range switch here is in the times 10 mode so if we look at the meter it's reading at about 16 uh, which means the DC beta of this transistor is 160 and this is handy uh, you know, if you're building a circuit with multiple transistors and you want to try to match their characteristics, that's one way to look at it. Now the other thing we can do with this is measure leakage. 
in a more quantitative way than we did in the little uh, tester I showed you earlier. Taking this, uh, leaving the cow switch, the uh, switch in the cow position here. Now let's just kind of adjust the cow again. Uh, if we turn the this dial here to the left, we'll go to measure what's called ICEO, which is the collector emitter leakage current with the base open. And if we pull that over, we can see the meter basically goes and reads zero, which means there's no leakage between collector and emitter, and that's good. We could turn the dial the other way to read ICBO, which is the collector base leakage. And you want that to be low as well. That junction is typically reverse biased when the transistor is operating, and that's reading low as well. So now I've gotten a more quantitative reading on both the leakage and the DC gain of this transistor, and that's something that a bit more sophisticated tester like this that can do for you. The nice thing is is that uh, you could typically find these testers you know on eBay or something for just a couple of dollars because not a lot of people use them anymore but they'll, they will give you some nice insight into your transistors and what their parameters are so you can go apply them in your circuit. Anyway, I hope you uh, found this video useful. There are still lots and lots of other ways that we didn't talk about for testing transistors, but I thought I'd give you a flavor of some of the tools that I use here in my shop when I go to check transistors. Uh, oftentimes I've got a, a pile of uh, transistors that uh, I've picked up from various places and I want to go check to be sure that they work and check their polarities and things like that. And tools such as these give me a lot more insight than simply testing the junctions. Anyway, thanks again for watching.